If you're looking for an episode related to the service mesh Kuma, then this episode is for you. Welcome back to the YouTube channel Is It Observable? Today's episode is going to be related to the Kubernetes series and also to the Service Mesh series where we already covered several episodes. So what is Istio, what is Linkerd, what is the Gateway API and what is Ambient Mesh. Today's episode will be focused on an open source Service Mesh and I'm referring to Kuma. If you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So let's see what you're going to learn out of this episode. We'll start with an introduction reminding the various service mesh available in the market. Then we'll look at the Kuma's architecture. We'll explain how we can expose traffic out of your cluster. And we'll look at few Kuma's policies and how to implement that. And of course, because it's easy to observable, we're going to talk about observability provided by Kuma. And as usual, we'll jump into the tutorial. To expose traffic out of a cluster, we can do it in various ways, utilizing ingress controllers, load balancers, or using a service mesh that will provide lots of various features to secure our traffic, adding TLS, or creating rate limit rules to avoid massive attacks. Route the traffic by creating ingress and ingress rules. Create traffic split rules to expose various versions of our services. And of course, observability. Because a service mesh will add proxy managing our various policies, we can easily get extra details on the behavior of our applications, including network details. The most popular service mesh of the market is obviously Istio that provides tons of features, but configuring Istio could seem quite complex for new users. But there are other services available in the market. The Ambient Mesh, which is a new version of the Istio removing sidecar proxies. If you want to learn more about Ambient Mesh, check out the episode related to it. Then we have Linkerd, simple and lightweight service mesh dedicated to HTTP and gRPC traffic. Linkerd relies on its own proxy, the Linkerd proxy that is very lightweight. If you want to learn more about Linkerd, check out the episode related to that. We have GlueMesh offering an enterprise managed version of Istio. GlueMesh removes the complexity of Istio and creates new CRDs to configure your policy based on personas. So we have the application owners, the operators and so on that will basically configure their own CRDs. So it's pretty well designed uh, and make the, the configuration much more easier. We have, of course, console, we have traffic, and last, we have Kuma. Kuma is an open source solution provided by the company Kong. Kuma is a service mesh relying on the most popular proxy, and I'm referring to Envoy. So let's have a look at Kuma's architecture. One of the interesting things related to Kuma is that it provides a service mesh support for Kubernetes, but also for bare metal environments. So you can start building a mesh composed of your Kubernetes clusters and also all the various bare metal applications that you may have in your environment. Similar to all the service mesh of the market, Kuma is composed of a control plane and a data plane. The control plane would be the heart of the service mesh all our configuration will go through the control plane, while the data plane is composed of the application plus the sidecar proxies. The idea is that if the control plane dies, it won't impact the behavior of our data plane. The deployments of Kuma control plane can be done in two distinct ways. You can either use the CLI, the Kuma CTL, or using help. Once we have deployed the control plane, we should find in our Kubernetes cluster a deployment with one replica set in the Kuma system namespace. Similar to Istio, Kuma relies on Envoy. Envoy will be added to all the parts that is part of the mesh. So what makes the major difference between Istio and Kuma? I would say that the configuration of Kuma is much more easier compared to Istio. In Istio, 
few policies, such as the rate limit requires to configure the Envoy with the help of a CRD named Envoy Filter. The main challenge is that the configuration of Envoy could sound quite complex. So that's where Kuma brings the value of introducing many CRDs, helping us to configure each network policies that we would like to apply in our mesh. To add application in our mesh, you simply need to label your application namespaces. So here is, is the right label. So kumaro.io slash sidecar injection enable. You can also do it adding the same label into your work deployments that you want to add in your mesh. When using Kuma, you will be probably using tags. Kuma introduced tags to map traffic to specific services or components of our cluster. Kuma will automatically add predefined tags related to our applications. So all the predefined tags are prefixed with the kuma.io prefix. So you have kuma.io slash service to identify the service name in our mesh. You will see that the service name of Kuma will be slightly different from the one that we define in Kubernetes. Then we have kuma.io slash zone to identify the zone in our mesh. This makes sense if you're using a multi-zone deployment. You have kuma.io slash protocol to mark our services using specific protocols supported by Kuma. So at the moment you have HTTP, HTTP2, gRPC, TCP, and Kafka. When adding a service or an application to the mesh, Kuma will automatically create a mesh service, I would say, in the data plane. The convention naming of that Kuma service is the following one. So you have the name of the service, underscore the namespace, underscore service, so SVC, and underscore the port number. So it means that if you have several ports, you will have several services in your mesh. One important aspect is to validate that Kuma has assigned the right protocol to our services. If you see that your services are marked TCP by Kuma, when you actually are using HTTP or HTTP2 or gRPC, then it would make sense to add the right annotations to your services to help Kuma to mark our services with the right protocol. We'll see later, especially when covering policies and observability, it is important to use non-TCP protocol to get more value out of the Kuma data. So to do so, you will need to modify your services. So, so here's an example of a services, so the shipping services. And if you pay attention, in the port definition, I've added the app protocol to define the right protocol used for this application. And also added the annotation kuma.io slash protocol to clearly help Kuma to say that this is a gRPC traffic. The other great thing with Kuma is that it will automatically come with a UI, helping us to see the various services in our mesh and the various policies that we have created. The UI is by default not exposed out of our cluster, so you will have to do a port forward. So here's, here's the, exam, the command that you may have to apply to see the UI. Kuma manages several mesh, where you can define when deploying your application in which mesh they would belong to. By default, all the data plane would be placed in the default mesh. To customize in which mesh we want to add our application, we can simply add the annotation in our namespace or our deployment, so kuma.io slash mesh and the name of the mesh. The configuration of the Kuma mesh would be done with the help of CRD. So we have specific CRD to expose the traffic. So that's the case for mesh gateway, mesh gateway instance, mesh gateway route. We have specific CRDs to create network policies. So mesh HTTP route, mesh retry, mesh timeout, mesh circuit breaker. And we have also one for security policies. So mesh rate limit, mesh traffic permission, and to enable, of course, the observability. So mesh trace, traffic metrics, and mesh access logs. Similar to the Gateway API, Kuma utilizes CRDs that will separate the configuration of a gateway and the various TLS settings that we want to apply and the actual route. So that's why we have three distinct CRDs, so the mesh gateway, the mesh gateway instance, and the mesh gateway route. The first important component is the mesh gateway instance that will be deployed a Kuma gateway in our cluster. When deploying it, it will define in which namespace we want to deploy this gateway, the number of replica required, and the type of community service, load balancer, node port, or cluster IP. 
You can of course also customize the resource settings related to this gateway instance. And to utilize this gateway instance in our network rule, it would be recommended to attach a tag, so kumado.io slash service, to name our gateway and it will be useful later on when we have to use it. So here's an example of a mesh gateway instance. Once we have the mesh gateway instance, we can now configure our mesh gateway. The mesh gateway would define which protocol and port our gateway will listen for traffic and in which mesh this gateway would belong to. And we also have used a selector to map the gateway instance of our choice. This is why tagging your gateway instance would be useful for the configuration of the mesh gateway. With the mesh gateway CRD, we will also be able to configure the TLS settings, the certificates and more. It's a bit similar to the gateway CRD of the API gateway. Here, for example, so here we have a very simple uh, gateway listening on the port 80. Last, similar to the API gateway, we need to define which servers would be exposed through this mesh gateway. This would be done with by defining a mesh gateway route. In the mesh gateway route, you will define the rule to match the gateway instance by specifying the selector based on the tag that we have defined. We will also define where the traffic will be routed, not to the community service name, but to the Kuma service name. So remember, service underscore namespace underscore SVC underscore port number. In the mesh gateway route, you will also be able to modify the traffic by adding or renaming request headers or even do some URL rewriting. So here is an example of a mesh gateway route. The beauty of using a mesh is to utilize policies to create retry logic in case of our services is having issue such as, for example, a 50x or a connection failure or a rate limit. These settings will be done using the mesh retry. It will define how many times we will retry before making it as a real failure. Then we have the request timeout, very useful policy, especially if we have a low performance of one of the services that could impact other components of our application. Why? Well, it's simple. If a service takes, let's say, two seconds more to respond to our service, it would mean that the other components will queue more requests and queuing a request would in general increase the CPU and the memory usage of the caller. Defining a request timeout is the best way to abort a transaction taking too much time to be executed. This will generate an HTTP error that could require to be handled using a custom code or simply using a retry logic. The request timeout will be easily configured using the mesh timeout CRD. Rate limit. This is an important policy that will block traffic from a certain throughput. The main objective with a rate limit is to block suspicious clients, technically protect ourselves from DDoS attacks. The configuration of a rate limit in Kuma will be very easily configured using the mesh rate limit CRD. Circuit breaker. This policy usually sounds very similar to the rate limit because you define a limit to a given service, but the objective here is clearly different. If we have reached out the limit, the endpoint will be marked as unhealthy. This is great if you have several replica to your services. If one replica is saturated because it has reached the limit defined in our circuit breaker rule, then the replica will be marked as unhealthy in our data plane and the traffic won't be routed until the threshold has turned to normal. This is going to be very easily configured by using one of the CRD called mesh circuit breaker. Fault injection. It's a policy that will generate errors to test the resiliency of our services. You can inject failure by increasing the delay of our services to limit the bandwidth uh, of a given service to abort a percent percentage of the traffic and so on. This is going to be configured using the CRD mesh fault injections. The fault injections of Kuma only support the protocol HTTP. Traffic permission. This defines rules on who is allowed to communicate to which services. It's a way of avoiding unexpected traffic between services in our cluster. This can be configured using the mesh traffic permissions. 
And last, we have traffic split. It's a common feature when we want to send a portion of the traffic to a new version of our services. Very useful when we want to do canary releases. Kuma doesn't provide a dedicated necessarily for that, but you would be able to do it to configure it using the mesh HTTP route. Of course, I'm not going to describe all the CRDs provided by Kuma because it takes a lot of time. It's going to be quite boring. But if you want to have more details, the documentation of Kuma is very well documented. So check it out on their website. Like expected from a service mesh, we should be able to increase the level of observability by adding data from the service mesh. Each time we hit a component of the data plane, we can technically get details of the traffic by looking at the traces, the logs, and of course, the metrics. Kuma has the options to deploy an observability stack in the control plane. Uh, what does it mean? Well, it means that it's going to deploy Loki, Prometheus, Grafana, and Jaeger to collect all the observability data from the mesh. Kuma has delivered predefined dashboards in Grafana, allowing us to visualize the data plane and the control plane health. Of course, it will look at the logs through the Loki data source of Grafana, the traces with the Jaeger data source of Grafana, and last metrics with the Prometheus data source. But what about using other observability backends? Well, this is going to be super easy because Kuma has added CRDs, helping us to define where we would like to send the data, logs, traces, and metrics. By default, all the traffic will generate observed data, but you can limit it to specific communication to specific endpoints. I think it's a pretty cool feature if you want to limit the observed data that you're sending to your backend. So how do you enable the observed data? Well, that is simple, using dedicated CRD. Let's start by looking at the mesh CRD that is configuring globally our mesh. If you deploy Kuma's control plane, you will already have a mesh CRD deployed, so you will have to edit it if you want to customize it. In fact, by default, it will be already configured to expose Prometheus metrics from the control plane and the data plane. All the data plane metrics will be accessible from the control planes of Kuma on the port 5670. So here is an example of a mesh settings. Of course, we can also enable TLS or modify the default port of the path of our exporter. So here is an example where we enable the TLS settings. One feature that I love is that you can ask the control plane to not only scrap the Envoy metrics, but also the application container exposing Prometheus metrics with the help of aggregate. So here is an example. It will also collect the metrics from containers like my service and the other co uh, container called other sidecar. Next is logs. To configure globally how we're going to generate access logs, we can use a CRD mesh access log. The mesh access log will allow us to define the backend, where the data would be sent, and we can have three distinct type of backends, file, TCP, or open telemetry. For each backend, you can also customize the format of the log produced by adding or removing extra information. By default, the logging format of Kuma will be the following one. This is for TCP, and we have another format for HTTP. So here's the format for HTTP. That is one of the reasons why you need to make sure that Kuma has properly identified the protocol used by our services, because the HTTP protocol will clearly provide more details in the logs generated. So here is an example of a mesh access log generating logs for any incoming or outgoing communications. In this example, you can see that I'm, I've configured the CRD to add new attributes to the open telemetry log format. So you can clearly customize and add more details to the log that you're sending to your backend. All the available Envoy variables could be found in the following, following URL. As you can see, there is a from and a to section. It means that we can even filter logs to specific communication of a cluster. Let's say I only want to have logs from the front end to the product catalog uh, version 1.5. So here is the example where we've, we are only defining the from and the to. So from the front end to the product catalog, and we add the tag to ask the specific version of uh, the uh, product catalog uh, uh, service. Last is traces. 
and this would be configured by using the mesh trace CRD. With the help of the mesh trace CRD, uh, you will be able to define the sampling rate that you would like to apply. If not precise, Envoy will set it to 100%. There are several sampling in Envoy. So here you have see the sampling overall, random and client. Overall will be applied after the client and the random. So setting it to 1%, you will force to have only 1% of the global spans produced by the Envoy. Client will define the percentage of spans produced if the request header has X client trace ID header. So it means that Envoy will produce traces if there is actually trace context. Random will definitely uh, randomly produce a percentage of traces. Mesh trace will require to define the backend that will receive our spans. Kuma supports Zipkin, Datadog, and of course, OpenTelemetry. You can also limit the trace generated to a subset of data by configuring the target ref. Here is an example of a mesh trace generating trace for all the services of the mesh. In this example, there is no sampling settings, which means that we'll take 100% sampling rules. Again, very important, Kuma will produce spans out of the Envoy on services using HTTP, HTTP2, or gRPC. So it will be very, very important to control that Kuma has marked our services with the right protocol. If it is marked TCP when you're using a gRPC uh, protocol, then you won't get any spans from your Envoy. In this tutorial, we will deploy Kuma and add open telemetry demo to the mesh. We'll expose the front-end services out of the cluster and apply few policies such as the request timeout, rate limit, traffic permissions, forward injections. We will configure Kuma to produce metrics, traces, and logs. All the signals will be sent to the open telemetry collector and the open telemetry collector will send the data back to Danatrace. In this tutorial, we will need, of course, a Kubernetes cluster, the cert manager, which is a requirements for the open telemetry operator, the Kuma control plane, the Danatrace tenant will be required, of course, and the open telemetry demo application. Like every tutorial that we deliver that is deliverable, there is always a GitHub repo, like usual. And here we're looking at, obviously, the one related to Kuma. So, a couple of requirements, of course, in a or Kubernetes cluster, so you can spin up whatever flavor of cluster you want, but then you will e you will need a Dynatrace tenant, like mentioned. So, if you don't have it, you can click on trial here, it will bring you to this page, and you can put your email and you will get a 15 days trial to try out that tutorials using Dynatrace. A couple of things. So, once you have your tenant, uh, we will run a script, like usual, to deploy everything, and we need... Uh, first, the tenant URL, and the second one, uh, an, a token to ingest data. So, if here we are in Dynatrace, uh, the uh, URL that you need to place uh, in uh, the script uh, would be, let me show you, it would be this one. So, you will get an URL with apps. The idea is to remove the apps from the URL. So here you have the other URL here, and you will pick this one. So id.dynatracelive.com. So that's the URL. Second thing is you will need to um, have a token. So you can say you can type Control K, type token, and it will bring you to access tokens. So if I click here on access tokens. I will be able to create new tokens. So you will have to click on, on the top right, generate new token, give a name to that token, and then uh, you will have to search for a specific scope. So here it's ingest. And in our case, we will ingest logs. So click on this one, metrics and open telemetry traces. You will have to click on generate token and the value of the token will be displayed once. So please copy that value and uh, paste it into the variable, uh, which is called data ingest token. So once you have this, you would have uh, to uh, deploy to install the Kuma CTL. It's required from the script. So here is the command. And once you have uh, the uh, Kuma CTL, the two variables populated, then you will be able to run the scripts that will deploy everything. 
So what you would expect from uh, this uh, script, uh, what you will find in the cluster. So if you look at first at the namespace, you can see that we have the cert manager. It's a requirement because we have the open telemetry collector. So that's the open telemetry operator system. We will have the hotel demo. Uh, namespace and then you can see that we have the Kuma, uh, Kuma system namespace where the control plane is already deployed there uh, so that's what you should get uh, the rest is technical namespaces here I have Kepler but in your case you won't have Kepler because <laughs> I, did, I just deployed from, from my, my sick so two things uh, you'll see that uh, if you look at the uh, first of all the pods running in the hotel demo they're already part of the mesh so what we can see is that we have most of, uh, we have an edge gateway. So we already deployed a gateway instance, and uh, which means that the open demo application is already exposed out of this cluster. The other thing that we can see here is that we have three uh, containers on each of those deployments. So the app, uh, the open telemetry sidecar uh, collector. So here in my case, I'm using sidecar, but we could use it on a various way. And of course, the uh, data plane, so the envoy, the, uh, co the, uh, the Kuma proxy injected into uh, this, uh, deploy this namespace because this, all the namespace has been enabled. By the way, if you look at, uh, if we describe, if you describe the namespace, we can see that we have, uh, it's been uh, in, uh, labeled. So that's why uh, this, uh, this, this proxy has been injected. Next is on the default namespace. We can see that we have uh, a daemon set deployment of the open telemetry collector. So there is already a collector that is configured, but I will walk through uh, the settings of this collector later on uh, once we cover the observed part. Uh, in the Kuma namespace, we can see that we have the control plane running and the control plane is going to be uh, uh, where we're going to have the UI exposed, where we are going to see uh, the, um, the various policies and so on. So I will show you once we start deploying policies to see them uh, in the uh, Kuma uh, control plane UI. Um, I won't deploy the, uh, the next step is about deploying the, the various observatory uh, pieces. So the logs and then the traces. So let's cover first the logs. Uh, here in the logs, what I've did here, I have configured the access log. So here, as you can see, it's similar to the example I showed you. I have the mesh access log CRD. I have added few um, uh, details, uh, more details related to um, uh, the, the attribute sends in the open telemetry log format. And I've defined the endpoint, which is our open telemetry collector setting as a daemon set in our cluster. Uh, so this is, has been already deployed, so I can, I can show you uh, that we have uh, this, uh, this access load called uh, dev default. So if I do, you can see that we have our uh, default mesh access log that has already been configured. The thing that is important, I didn't show you briefly, but if you look at the deployments uh, for this application, I mentioned several times, it's very important to get uh, the right protocol defined in your services. And all the services of this uh, open telemetry demo, I have adjusted to uh, force uh, the protocol to be gRPC with those two components. Because otherwise, um, by default, Kuma will uh, uh, target, will uh, define that this, this, those services are using TCP and uh, we will, won't have the HTTP format log access logs produced and for the traces, we won't have any spans produced. So to be able to uh, receive those traces uh, and logs and metrics and so on, um, I already have pre-configured uh, an open telemetry collector pipeline. So here is the open telemetry collector CRD, the main one with the, the daemon set. And uh, the first thing that it's doing here, I'm not covered the Prometheus, I will exp explain it later on. But first, I am collecting all the logs from that cluster using the file log receiver. But the other thing which is important is I'm listening for OTLP. So Open Telemetry uh, uh, is listening for Open Telemetry endpoints. And as you see in the bottom, we have different pipelines. And I've built one for logs. Uh, this is the one that we, we uh, use. We have uh, one receiver, so Open Telemetry uh, protocol, the file log, and then we try to add attributes as well. And then we are sending it back to Dynatrace. So what you will get out of this. 
Well, I have added here a couple of um, predefined uh, DQL uh, that uh, you can run in Dynatray. So I will show you directly here. If I go to um, the uh, notebook, so notebook is where you can uh, test queries. Uh, I, I didn't build any dashboard, but we can imagine to, to build a dashboard. In the uh, notebook, I can run some queries. And here I already have a predefined query for TCP, where I am uh, only looking at the uh, uh, mesh access log. This the only logs produced by uh, the mesh access log uh, uh, CRD. And here I'm filtering to took because in a TCP logging format by default, there is a, a took certain duration, took milliseconds, some, some duration. So if I run that, that uh, DQL, you can see that here's the content. So you can say uh, we have a couple of keywords and here you can see that uh, it shows you uh, which component is uh, communicating which with IP address. And you can see it's took uh, that amount of milliseconds, so I can track it. But with this parsing here, I'm able to get the mesh name, uh, the from service, uh, to the to service, where here it's external, and then we can see the duration. So here it's about uh, a long duration, I would say. Um, and then we can see the byte send and the byte receive. So this is uh, a way of parsing the logs specifically for TCP. But as, as explained, I have uh, forced the application to be uh, identified as uh, HTTP or gRPC uh, in our case. Um, and so which means the most of the access log from the various proxies, they will produce HTTP logs format. So here I have another DQL here where I say, again, okay, mesh access logs, and I'm removing uh, took because I don't want to have a TCP format and I'm parsing it. So if I run that query, we can see that, first of all, the log format is obviously different. We have uh, more information. And similar to the previous one, I am uh, getting the mesh name, the URL, uh, the response code, the response flags, the uh, response times, the byte received, and so on. And remember, in the um, in our uh, configuration of the access log, we've requested to add a few fields. So we can see then here, start time is here, upstream transport failure is here, a respond co uh, response code details is here, and request duration is here. You will see that it's quite interesting to get those fields, especially the response code details, because when we applied some policies, uh, we can filter based on this one. Uh, to uh, only select uh, request timeout uh, or rate limited uh, and so on. So that's a way of utilizing the logs uh, produced by uh, the uh, by Kuma. So the next thing is traces. So uh, this is going to be configured through using mesh trace. And in this particular case, I can see that uh, I added this sampling. It's not required. You can all, almost drop it. Uh, because it's going to be by default 100%. And here is the, the path to uh, the open temperature collector. Once you deploy it, uh, you will have uh, traces produced by the various endpoints. So which means if we look, go back to uh, Dynatrace, uh, you uh, will have to uh, open control K. Uh, it's and type services. Uh, here it is, but I already have it on on my uh, here on the, my left on the pinned applications, and what you can see here is that we already have all the open telemetry demo um, services detected by uh, by Dynatrace, uh, but because the spans are sent to Dynatrace, and as you can see here, we're looking at the product catalog. We can see uh, the response time, the failure rates, uh, the various endpoints uh, involved in the incoming and outgoing uh, services. And if I click on one of those traces, for example, good product, we will see that uh, we have, uh, so here the front end calling get product. And then you can see that we have the egress and ingress. So here is the, the steps going through uh, the uh, proxy. Uh, so this is an example with uh, the product catalog, but we can also pick, for example, the checkout, because here at checkout services, we will have um, order placed. So the trace obviously will be bigger. Uh, and so let's take place order, for example. And as you can see, on each individual steps, egress, ingress uh, of the uh, checkout, and then we have the actual checkout services methods. And then every time I go through another services, so here it's another call to the checkout, but we can check later on that there is somewhere, uh, somewhere, somewhere, there should be another. 
here carts you see you can see that we are uh, calling the cart services uh, so we have the uh, egress from the checkout going to the cart services so it's, it's basically show you all the uh, con uh, connections uh, and see the, the the time spent into the services so here you can see it's uh, less than a than a milliseconds here it's like a microseconds so you can also measure the time spent through those proxies if you go back here I, uh, uh, here is the mesh config, um, so I didn't change it. In fact, uh, you will have the same uh, same sections for in your mesh. It's the default section where we have the default port for the metric. So you don't here have to touch the mesh. In fact, the mesh will be the same one. Uh, whatever you're doing, you will have uh, metrics produced. What is important is the pipeline from the collector perspective. So you can do it in various way. In my case, I'm using the collector. And the collector here I've added to collect those metrics, the Prometheus uh, receiver. And the Prometheus receiver, receiver of the collector um, has different settings uh, to uh, precise how the data will be collected. So with a scrap config. So here I've created a job called Kuma data plane that has been collected every five seconds. And you can see here I am doing, a, it's using a Kuma SD config. So it's a, it's a, it's a one of the configs available in the Prometheus server. Uh, and you can see that I'm po pointing to uh, the URL of Kuma's control plane uh, on the port, uh, the default port of uh, provided by uh, Kuma. And here there is some red label config. So here it, it's getting uh, the Kuma mesh. Uh, so uh, and it's going to name that attributes as a metric as a mesh Sa same thing for kuma data plane it's going to name it as data plane kuma services as service so this is how the metrics uh, the, the attributes will be added to our metrics one uh, small note very important uh, is that prometheus is producing a cumulative format of metrics i can talk about it in a dedicated episode um, so, but Danatrace is supporting the Delta. Uh, so there is two format in the industry, cumulative and Delta. So in my case, because I need to send it to Danatrace, I need to make sure that I'm uh, converting uh, those metrics uh, that are in cumulative to Delta. And also one thing is um, uh, Danatrace doesn't support any histogram. So here I'm using a filter processor where uh, any metrics that are the type histogram will be dropped uh, and not sent to Danatrace. So those are the two main processors. So if you scroll down to the pipeline, I have a specific uh, metric um, pipeline for Prometheus. So I'm connecting the Prometheus metrics because I know that they will be in a cumulative format. And this is where I'm using filter to drop the histograms. And then I am converting them into Delta. And then as, as last, I'm sending to Danatrace. So which means if you go back to Danatrace, uh, you can find those metrics. Uh, same thing, you can control, con type control K and then metrics already have it as a, a pinned in my end so you, I click here and uh, it will show you all the metrics available in your Dynatrace tenant and we, if you search for example for Envoy you will see all the metrics produced uh, uh, from an Envoy perspective so let's take for example one that has some uh, some metrics gRPC count you can see here it sets the gRPC count uh, request so I can create a chart uh, and uh, I can basically uh, do some filter if I want. Um, and here, let's say you can see that we have our service. This is how you can see the metrics. So the metrics is back in the entrance and, and you can then start utilizing it. From the old way of producing metrics, but you can also use the Dynatrace query language, uh, similar to what we did in the notebook uh, to uh, plot the time series metrics. Last piece, piece is to uh, look at the policies. So I'm, I already have deployed them. So uh, you don't have to, uh, I'm gonna show you how to deploy it, but you can follow the steps of the exercise of the tutorials. I have also predefined some, some Dynatrace query language that you can use to detect request timeouts, the metrics. I'm not gonna cover the, all those aspects, but it's still re relevant. So I have a mesh permission, mesh for injections, a rate limit and a timeout. The best thing is, uh, honestly, is to uh, expose the uh, control plane. So for this, so for this, you need to do the port forward on the service uh, control plane on the port 60, 5681. 
And now if I go back to uh, my browser and open localhost, uh, localhost 5681 on the UI, you can see the control plane UI. So you can see that we have the default has 22 services. So if I click on this, I can see that uh, the mesh has the Prometheus metrics exposed. I can see the various services and like explain again, this is the Kuma service naming. So open term demos ad services is the service name, then the namespace and then SVC and the port number. So it's very important to, to get uh, understand that aspect because uh, it will be required when you build your policies. The gateway, it's the one that we've used for the open temperature demo. We can see it's here, it's online. Uh, we can see the data plane proxies, so all the proxies deployed, so the various uh, envoys, and we can see the policies. And so you can see here that we have already uh, uh, the, access, the mesh access log defined here. Uh, we have the fault injections that I uh, uh, already implemented, uh, targeting the front end, the checkout, and the product catalog. I have the uh, mesh gateway route, uh, with a, there are default um, uh, mesh uh, gateway routes created, so that's why you have it. And you can see here, right limit that I've done created a, a rule for uh, the checkout and the rule from the front end. Uh, and same thing, I did a permission where uh, I can on, only authorize SQL requests going to the Postgres services for certain certain services. In fact, uh, the one from the Open Temperature called, uh, demo application. And same thing for Redis, where it's mainly the, the card services. So you can see here uh, the, 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 the rule that I have created. So um, this is very useful UI because at the end, it helps you to uh, um, confirm that uh, your configuration is being properly uh, done. So if you same thing, if you go to services, let's say uh, the checkout, I know that I've built on policies. So then I can cl click on the on the, the this specific uh, envoy uh, so I can see the this specific one and then uh, insights give you some information about responses so the, the t live t data uh, stats uh, give you also the the exposed the, the metrics from the, the the application so you can see cluster open to, uh, from the from the exporter of the envoy and then a cluster you can see the policies applied specifically uh, to uh, this um, to this workload and you can see that we have uh, a rate limit here defined uh, yes a rate limit defined here that has been created so you can also f look at uh, browse from services to proxy to policies all the policies you will be found in the kuma folder uh, and you can see that i have permissions like i said is the one from uh, feature flag is uh, authorized to communicate with the PostgreSQL and same thing for car services with the Redis. And rate limited, I have done some uh, some, some small rate limit. Uh, the idea is that uh, we can run queries to uh, identify uh, if we've been rated or timeout depending on the policies that we have applied. But if you go back to the trace, here is an example of a query. Like I said before, by parsing the logs here, you can see response code details. There is some uh, um, keywords, uh, reasons on why why we have this card uh, error, uh, error, HTTP error. So if I, I filter through response timeout, I can see which services is being timeout at the moment. So you can see here with this uh, query, I can see that it's the card services and the product catalog. So this is very easy to, to, to build. Um, and that's why I've added into the readme file uh, the various queries that you can run to detect uh, the required, for example, rate limit. It's a uh, local rate limited. Uh, so if we can, for example, take that query and test it out, it's going to be the same thing. So up, query grail, I can run it. And I get some details. So let's ch change the, the display. I can, as you can see that the front end is currently rate limited. So you can, you can keep track on this. That's it for today's episode related to Kuma. Kuma is, I think, a very interesting uh, service mesh providing all the features that we expect from a service mesh. Of course, all the policies that we covered, so the rate limit, the traffic split, uh, the observability, and so on. One important aspect that makes Kuma 
really great is the fact that it's super easy to configure. The CRD are simple. The only thing that we need to make sure when you use Kuma is one, uh, understanding the Kuma service name to define the right policies in your cluster. And the second aspect is the notion of protocol. If you not have the right protocol, then of course you won't get uh, details on your access logs, you won't get details in your traces. And if you want to apply specific policies like rate limit or timeout or whatever, it will be of course very limited. So again, very great service mesh, but few things needs to be considered when you start using Kuma mesh. One thing that uh, Kuma, I didn't cover, of course, is Kuma supports pretty well the Gateway API. So you, if you want to deploy the Gateway API and use the standard CRD of the Gateway API, it will be also possible. One thing that uh, would probably interesting is to see if Kuma is moving towards the direction of the server sidecarless uh, service meshes. Uh, that other uh, service mesh has started the adventure, like Istio with Ambient Mesh or Cilium, for example, with the Cilium service mesh. Again, if you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So see you soon for another episode. Bye.